Hello VC community, um, welcome to another video and thanks for tuning in. The summer is unfortunately over here and the fall has started and now suddenly everything is much colder and it's a bit raining. So yesterday I thought I will focus on uh, albums that somehow um, can be associated with uh, summer heat, desert, Africa, just for fun. So I started with Caravanserai by Santana. This is Santana's fourth album. It came out in 1972 and uh, it is uh, quite a deviation from uh, the musical style of the three previous albums. But there is still a lot of percussive rock driven music on it, but mostly it's dominated by jazz fusion. Also, it seems to mark sort of the uh, met metaphysical awakening of Carlos Santana. Um, so you can all find it here. But it's a good album. It takes a bit longer to get into than the previous one. But um, that's oftentimes the case with good albums. Continued by Shamal by Gong. This, of course, is a wonderful album. Um, it's also a, it's also a transitional album of source because this marks certainly the the beginning of this French permutation of gong. So here you can get the full picture. Um, it's nice gatefold sleeve here with, with the band as it was back then. You can hear Pierre Molin who was of course the drummer and percussionist of the band and was about to become the band leader in the years to come. Yeah, um, this is an album, it still features a few tracks um, with Steve Hillich and Mike Girodi and uh, yeah, I really like it. I mean, there's a lot of interesting sort of ethnographical stuff on it, uh, a bit experimental. But um, it's, uh, it was, by the way, it was produced by Nick Mason of Pink Floyd's fame. Well, that's interesting. So, um, a good album and uh, an association to Desert, of course. Now, uh, this one is, of course, Camel and uh, Breathless. Now this was uh, Camel's first album intended to offer sort of a shorter song format. Yeah, I mean it has Echoes on it and uh, Breathless, uh, Rainbow's End. It's a good album. For some uh, hard-boiled Camel fans it might be a little too, too strongly on the sort of a rock song format side, but uh, I like it. Um, now this is an interesting album. Um, this is called Africa Drum, Chant and Instrumental Music, recorded in Niger, Mali and Upper Volta by Stephen Jay. Now this is uh, this came out uh, in the mid 70s and uh, was part of the Explorer series. And uh, so this is an album with uh, African music with original recordings. It comes with nice liner notes telling you all about uh, the source of the music and uh, the cultural context really beautiful cover sleeve so this came out on non such records and uh, so which is I believe an American label and uh, it's one of the rare cases that I see a printed uh, plastic in a sleeve yeah, and um, of course this is a part of a bigger series, so uh, I do have um, another album from this project, which in this case is uh, Africa Witchcraft and Ritual Music, recorded in Kenya and Tanzania, this time by David Fancho. And it's again the same principle, 
with interesting liner notes about the music. Yeah, I'm I'm really uh, always uh, interested in this kind of records. I cannot pass it by. I mean, vinyl can be such an interesting source of um, of original ethnographical music. For example, once on a flea market, I found this really nice seven inch, which is a Giriyama dance record. Um, this was printed, this was published in Mombasa, in Kenya. You can get here back the... I could not tell you when, because there is no year on this. I'm, I guess, 70s, maybe 60s. Uh, but it's in a very good shape. So you can check out here this... <laughs> Nice. So I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. So uh, then, just tongue in the cheek, boys don't cry, the cure, desert, palms, a pyramid. Now this is, or is not, the cure's um, debut album. Now of course it's known that The Cure's debut album is uh, Three Imaginary Boys with this uh, wonderful iconic uh, imagery on the cover but um, this here was a, a album that came out a couple of months later and was dedicated to the American market for reasons I do not understand but um, the thing is the Three Imaginary Boys album and this one differ by three songs. And I must say I like the three songs on this album better than on Three Imaginary Boys, even though this is the worst cover, definitely. But um, I like this album better. But um, regardless of that, um, this 19th 79 released uh, LP is really wonderful music and I would argue this is still the best that The Cure have done. I mean there is something very pristine about it and very very original and um, um, and uh, I mean in this setup there is just no filler. Every song is really amazing. So yeah um, that's all for vinyl I have here. Now I wanted to show you a couple of CDs mostly because you would not get this stuff on vinyl. Um, well the, here in this case you actually would. This is uh, the soundtrack to the movie The Sheltering Sky which was composed by Ryuichi Sakamoto. There is actually a very nice vinyl version of this with a beautiful uh, cover which is different than this one. It's an Italian edition and when I have the time, the news and the money I will get it. Um, this is a wonderful soundtrack by the way. Um, probably one of the best that Sakamoto ever made. Also it is, it is accompanied by uh, some tracks by Richard Horowitz who is a big uh, musical specialist for North African music in general. Now, from uh, since uh, The Sheltering Sky is of course based on a novel by Paul Bowles, we come to this uh, interesting CD, which is uh, Black Star at the Point of Darkness, Paul Bowles. This came, on, this came out on Sub Rosa, I don't know, 600 years ago, <laughs> I don't remember when, must be late 80s, early 90s, and... Um, it includes it includes um, an interesting mixture mixture of Paul Bowles's life. So there are uh, short stories and poems written by him and read by him, but there are also um, some piano pieces. He was originally he was a music composer, a successful one before he went to North Africa, and um, there are some of the famous Paul Bowles um, ethnographical recordings. So he made a lot of recordings with a. Uh, tape recorder in the streets of Morocco. Um, 
a lot of weddings and uh, just daily life situations. And this stuff has been sampled uh, by many musicians <laughs> into their songs. So this is an interesting CD. Maybe something for the acquired taste. But uh, this leads me to this CD, which is the American Trance Music, which also came out on Sub Rosa, and which also includes two recordings by Paul Bowles. Now the rest of the CD is music recorded by uh, Randall Barnwell, and um, it's uh, authentic uh, live recording of, of Gnawa and Jilala music. So this is a very cool music, just to throw it in the CD player and let it run. And uh, fill your room with the sound of Marrakesh. Now I have another CD uh, from a similar area, which is a French CD called um, La Musique Saharienne. Um, and this is more Berber music, I assume mostly from uh, the area of Algeria, maybe Libya. You yeah, haven't heard this for quite a while. Um, yeah, also there is this uh, rough guide to the music of the Sahara, which I still have to listen. I bought it a long time ago, but I haven't listened to it. I would do it now probably to summon the lost summer. <laughs> yeah. Maybe finally, Sahara by Khaled. It's a wonderful album by Khaled. And even though Sahara means Sahara in Arabic, it's a reference to the first name of his daughter. So, uh, that's it for now. All I have about uh, heat and desert. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.